very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on modeling and simulation of communication systems. So, the last time we were discussing floating point numbers and uh, we had said that there are certain reserved words in the floating point notation that uh, we had described. Today we will look at those reserved words in slightly greater detail. So, the last time we had covered the reserved word 0 that when the exponent and the fraction are all zeros, then naturally the resulting number is also 0. The second reserved word, but this leads to leads to two representations of 0. Since uh, plus 0 and minus 0, so whether the sign bit is 0 or 1, both imply 0. So, this leads to two representations of 0. We will discuss this uh, in slightly greater detail in a uh, few minutes. The next thing or the next set of reserved words are denormalized numbers. So, denormalized numbers are a special class of numbers, denormalized numbers are a special class of numbers whose exponent is 0, which means that the resulting exponent or the representation of the biased exponent. So, I should write that the biased exponent is 0. Since the biased exponent is 0 means that uh, it is already smaller than the smallest possible representable number. This thing uh, we should keep in mind that uh, a denormalized number is already smaller than the smallest possible uh, representable number and in this case the hidden bit, the leading bit uh, which for the standard floating point notation is fixed at 1, we have now fixed it to 0. So, basically a denormalized number can be represented in this format where x equals minus 1 to the power s, s means sign into fraction into 2 to the power minus bias. Bi bias uh, we know that for single precision it is 127 and double precision it is 1023. So, this is obviously since uh, this is there and this is smaller than the smallest possible representable number. So, this is, these are smaller than normal numbers and uh, basically now the floating point or the floating decimal has disappeared because uh, you are now fixed at 2 to the power minus bias. So, the floating decimal has disappeared. So, what happens is as this number reduces, you keep on adding more and more zeros to the left and as a result. So, when you add more and more zeros to the left, the actual significant bits start decreasing. So, basically what you are writing is 0 point b1, b2, b3 and so on and uh, when b1, b2, b3 as the number becomes smaller, these b1, b2, b3, they start tending towards 0. So, naturally you have leading zeros and then you have the significant bits. So, naturally the precision reduces as uh, the number becomes smaller and uh, this implies this diminishing precision. So, you gradually tend towards 0 and when all the bits become 0, you lead to this uh, representation of 0 and as I said, this idea of denormalized numbers leads to two possible representations of 0 plus and minus 0. So, there are two possible numbers, the arrow is wrong here. So, I will just point it, that there are two possible representations of 0, possible in this case. The other set of reserved words are with the maximum exponent. So, the other set of reserved words are with the maximum exponent that is biased is all ones, the biased exponent is all ones. So, in this case when the biased exponent is all ones and the fraction is all zeros what we get is plus minus infinity. So, let us do this and plus minus infinity can be used in subsequent cal calculations. Let us demonstrate this in MATLAB while we discuss this. So, we open MATLAB and uh, change to our example folder and now let us uh, say that I define x equals 2 divided by 0 infinity, y equals 1 divided by 0 or y equals minus 1 divided by 0 minus infinity and minus y is also infinity, 3x is also infinity, 3 to the power x is also infinity, 1 to the power x 
1 to the power x only in case of MATLAB or MATLAB interprets 1 to the power infinity as 1 and naturally you subtract you add infinity to infinity you get infinity you multiply infinity by infinity you get infinity you raise infinity to the power infinity you get uh, infinity again but we have another form which is not a number n a n so there is another form not a number where exponent is all ones but the fraction is not equal to 0. So, what happens in this case? This uh, indicates an illegal or an undefined result or mo in most cases this is uh, so this is for the 5 undefined limits. So, I will write the 5 undefined limits that uh, lead to not a number. infinity divided by infinity 0 by 0 etc so uh, a not a number cannot be used in subsequent calculation since this is an illegal operation so let's say that infinity minus infinity is not a number or minus infinity plus infinity is not a number. Similarly, 0 minus c divided by 0 divided by 2 divided by 0 not a number, but if I write 3 divided by 2 divided by 0 I will get 0 because 3 divided by infinity is 0, but 3 divided by 0 divided by 2 divided by 0 takes the infinity over infinity form. So, it is not a number and uh, as I said earlier the NAN or not a number cannot be used for subsequent calculations. You try to perform any operation on a not a number, you will get not a number. Add anything to not a number, you will get not a number. You subtract anything from not a number, you will get not a number. Infinity, you can still play around with it in some calculations, but uh, not a numbers are totally illegal operands. So, please, you have to you please keep that in mind. So, now let us having described floating point numbers completely let us discuss an example. So, how do we add floating point number? Obviously, we will talk about multiplication as well, but uh, let us first consider floating point addition that uh, consider a 4 digit decimal example that we want to add 9.999 into 10 to the power 1 to 1.601 into 10 to the power minus 1. So, this is what we want to do. So, this is we know is 99.99 this is 0 0.1601. So, we first write these and one five one zero zero one this and the next thing we do is we right shift this this and uh, we suppose we want to represent this using only four significant digits so this is uh, using just four significant digits as in. so uh, this is how we do floating point addition in practice or for decimal numbers. So, let us extend this logic to binary numbers and uh, repeat this process. So, now consider a 4 digit binary addition. So, you want to add 1 0 0 0 into 2 the minus 1 to minus 1 in 0 0.110 into 2 to the minus 2. So, again add a trailing 0 minus 1. and there is a minus sign over here this so 0 carry 1 0 0 0 so 0 0.001 into 2 to the power minus 1 equals 1 into 2 to the power minus 4 and this equals 0 0.0625. So, this is uh, basically how we would extend it to or how would we would extend the logic for uh, floating or decimal 
we extended what we have done here is that uh, we have taken the class 4th uh, mathematics uh, example of decimal addition and extended it to floating point addition and you can uh, now write this as an algorithm. So, to write this as an algorithm what we will do is let us uh, write this as an algorithm I will create a new slide and write this as an algorithm over there that would make life slightly simpler. So, insert uh, let us insert a new slide and one take the two numbers compare the nets and suitably right shift significant of the number with the smaller exponent 2 may the suitably light shift to make their exponents equal 3 and 4 adjust and adjust and realign. So, if you detect a carry you will obviously have to add one bit and shift everything by right. So, this is how you perform floating point addition uh, in general. Floating point mul multiplication again we will first consider an example and then talk about actual multiplication. So, when we multiply two decimal numbers say we want to multiply 1.11 into 10 to the power 10 huge number and 9.2 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, what we do is add the exp or what we have been taught in uh, middle school is multiply the significance add the exponents. So, this is what we have been taught uh, in middle school for this. So, let us do this 1.11 into 5. So, 10 minus 5 is 5. So, 1.11 into 9.2 or I would put it would use the other way 9.2 2 1 2 10.212 into 10 to the power 5 equal to 1.0212 into 10 to the power 5, sorry 10 to the power 6. And again we can get rid of this 2 if we want just 4 significant uh, digits as described earlier and obviously both of these are positive. So, we say that the sign bit is 1, sorry the sign bit is 0 and this is uh, a positive number. So, basically this gives us a floating point multiplication algorithm that I am going to write here. So, the algorithm is add nets multiply significance and so uh, why dealing with floating point numbers we have to be careful that uh, we are dealing with biased exponents. So, what we will do is we will first unbiased the add exponents. So, the procedure for adding exponents is as follows unbias both add them 
bias again. Multiply significands. So, basically, how do we multiply significands? We will discuss on the next slide. Normalize the result, round and uh, renormalize if necessary. So, we will look at uh, a slightly more complicated example, or uh, let us look at this example only. So, So, this is known as the Booth algorithm for multiplication and uh, so basically when dealing with binary the good thing is, so this is called the multiplicand and this is called the, so the Booth algorithm is that uh, if the ith bit from right of the multiplier. So, I will write Booth algorithm completely. So, start and for each or initialize step 1, initialize the product to all zeros m plus n bits for the ith bit of the multiplier if b i b i b i equal to 0 then do nothing b i equal to 1, then shift the multiplier, multiplicand by i bits and add to the product and repeat this until you have exhausted all the bits of the multiplier. So, this is essentially what we do in uh, long decimal multiplication, but uh, for the binary case since we are only dealing with zeros and ones, the procedure becomes simpler and uh, this can also be parallelized that is a computer architecture or a ALU design problem that uh, this can also be parallelized to be completed in just one clock cycle. So, as a summary we can say that both multiplication and addition. And uh, by clever design of the arithmetic logic unit, both of these can be completed using the same number of clock cycles in the processor. So, these clock cycles or uh, these operations are as I said are known as floating point operations and the computational power of uh, a computer or a supercomputer is uh, measured in the number of flops or floating point operations per second. That is why when you talk about the computational power of a supercomputer or when you talk about a supercomputer that uh, you say that uh, the said supercomputer has uh, a processing capability of these many teraflops. So, this is a good way to understand uh, that jargon about uh, the working of supercomputers and then there is a the question of complexity. So, we want to do fast computation. The one of the main purposes of this course is to do good efficient or uh, there is a phrase called good programming, efficient programming, fast programming. So, the idea is that uh, we want to code or uh, we want to program so that uh, the number of uh, 
clock cycles required or the, uh, the speed of our program in layman terms that uh, we want to maximize the speed of uh, the simulation or the, we want to maximize the speed of uh, any program that we write. So, in order to maximize the speed, so we measure that in time that uh, a program that takes a smaller amount of time is definitely better than uh, to perform the same operation is definitely better than a program that takes a longer amount of time to perform the same operation. And uh, all the computations, all the mathematical computations are performed in floating point operations. So, naturally you do a floating point operation, you talk about the computational complexity, you talk about the time taken by a program, you talk about the number of floating point operation that the said program requires. And uh, so, the computational complexity of a program is also measured in the number of floating point uh, operations that program requires. So, generally what we do that uh, if we say that we give a length n array to a program. input we want to write its computational lengths as function of capital N. So, we want to write its computational requirements as a function of n and uh, this is where this big O notation comes. So, this looks like theta, I am sorry. So, this is where this big O notation comes in handy. So, the exact definition of big O of Gn is that a function Fn is said to be big O of g n if limit n tends to infinity f n by g n gives you some constant b where is finite. So, any function f n is said to be big O of g n if it can be represented as some finite constant times uh, g n that is what uh, big O means in slightly layman terms and we use this to find. So, we can say that if for uh, input of length n program requires g n where g n can be any n, then we say that computational complexity the said program is order of g n. The good thing is that uh, we for most practical cases the most uh, algorithms that we will consider here we will work with we will work with polynomial time complexity. So, uh, this is uh, all about uh, computational complexity. So, before we move on to the so, yes, this was about the two basic data types uh, integer and float and uh, now let us move on to the basic uh, operations that MATLAB can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and exponentiation and uh, so this and uh, this is uh, so one more thing. So, this and this and order of Nested brackets, brackets. So, 
The order of precedence in MATLAB is uh, we first evaluate the nested brackets, then we evaluate brackets, then we evaluate the exponents, then uh, we do multiplication and division or modulo operation. Modulo means remainder. So, then we do the remainder operation and uh, finally, addition and subtraction. So, this is uh, quite similar to the board mass uh, or this is uh, a version of the board mass rule that uh, all of us uh, have done in elementary school. So, now the next thing that uh, or uh, it is a good point to stop, but uh, let us also consider taking user inputs uh, live in MATLAB and displaying the output. So, I will just uh, run this code live and uh, show you. So, clear window, clear all. So, x equals input x and I will put a space here, I will copy this and this becomes I enter access 2 and uh, I paste that and I say that uh, this is the same for y and I paste it and enter, enter the value of y. So, I enter say 5, now I say disp, display that is z equals is comma just a second ah, yes i forgot to concatenate the arrays so i'll concatenate the arrays uh, this concatenation we'll talk about uh, in a couple of lectures so x plus y is 7 so if i instead of double quotes if i use single quotes then uh, the string will be contiguous so I will use single quotes here and x plus z equals x plus y is 7. So, this is how we deal with user input and how we directly display output in MATLAB. Next is comparisons and logical operators. So, logical actually logical operators are uh, another class. So, a logical operator basically another data type. that takes values of that takes binary values of true false. So, let us show this example say want to check the validity of this statement. So, 3 is greater than 4 logical false. So, 4 equal to double equal to means check with so uh, this is a good time to point this out as well so a double equal to implies that uh, you want to check the validity whether the left hand side is equal to the right hand side and a single equal to is an assignment statement so please note that that a double equal to is a logical operator and a single equal to is a statement and uh, say 3 not equal to 4 is logically true so this is uh, logical one. So, all the logical operators are one bit. So, but now the natural question would be that where do we use these uh, logical statements. So, these logical operators, so greater than equal to, less than equal to, greater than, less than all of these are logical operators. So, now the question is that where do we use these logical operators and uh, the answer for that is simple that uh, these logical operators are used in flow of control uh, in controlling the flow of uh, the program in MATLAB and uh, how we do that will be the topic of the next lecture. So, thank you for uh, being with us for now.